what can I say about Irma? Um, when we first got back to the marina after I shaked down, she was only a disturbance on the radar. Um, we knew that she was going to come across parts of the Caribbean, but we didn't really know her path for Florida. So the first few days we got back, it was just work as normal, and we made sure to keep an eye on it. Probably about twice a day we were checking the updates to see if we could see where her path was going. But at the time, our focus was really just working on those projects that we had been having pile up that are going to get us out of here at the end of hurricane season. So we spent the first few days back here just working on projects and keeping an eye to see what happened. And if it came near Florida, we didn't know how bad it was going to be. Last year we were here for Matthew and it was supposed to be this like big terrible thing and we got all ramped up for it and it ended up not being a deal for us in Indian Town, thankfully, so we didn't want to go into full hurricane prep for the boat if it was just going to, you know, waste a week of ours and nothing was going to come of it. So we were a little hesitant to do some of the big things for preparations, but one of the things that we did need to do anyway was to put new seals in our hatches. So we did get on that right away because whether a storm was coming or not, it was a project that we had to finish. As part of our hurricane prep and something we've been meaning to do for a while anyway to prevent leaks during rainstorms or when water washes over, we're going to replace the seal that runs around. If you get close, you can probably tell it's a little dry and cracked and needs some replacing anyway. So if there were ever a time, uh, it may as well be when there's a hurricane, a category four that's um, possibly gonna hit you, so. Yeah, we never actually had a leak through them um, because we never were taking much water on deck at all but uh, now is a good time to do it. Yeah. They're not the prettiest hatches in the world, but uh, they're one piece cast, uh, which are actually really, really strong. I just can't wait for you to get uh, our paper towels. Back to using my nails for work. The perfect tool for everything. At least they don't scratch off paint. We got one done. Looking all nice and pretty and hopefully very watertight. Should be. One thing I should mention for those of you who don't know exactly where we are in Indian Town, it is a great spot to be for hurricanes. We are near the southeast coast of Florida, about 30 miles north of Palm Beach. We are about 25 miles east inland from the coast from the main town of Stewart, and probably about 10 miles east of Lake Okeechobee. So it is nice when hurricanes come and we are that far inland. And the best part too is even though we're up a river, we don't have to worry about swells because there's two locks that protect us from each big side of water. Probably um, about five to 10 miles east of us between us and Stewart is the St. Lucie lock. And that brings us up 13 feet from sea level. So even when surges come in from storms, they don't have the ability to keep pushing up the river. And then there's also one lock that blocks us from Lake Okeechobee. And since both of those are regulated, we're kind of in the middle of those where the water only changes due to rainfall. So that's one great thing about being here. Not only are we inland, but we're protected from the surge, which is usually what causes the most damage during storms. It's not always the wind, it's the flooding. So uh, at least we had that on our side. I do have to say that even though our shakedown was coming to an end and it wasn't any kind of hurricane that brought us back to Indian Town, we just knew that we needed to get to work so that we could finish all of the remaining projects on elements before hurricane season ended and we start to head into the Caribbean. Just a few days after we got in here and it was looking like Irma was going to hit Florida, 
the boatyard just started filling up all of a sudden. They were sectioning off slips for people who reserved them, and even though they couldn't get to them yet, they started paying them, and I think there was like a two-week minimum payment to reserve a slip, so those all filled up pretty fast, and the storage yard, which was already full from people who left their boats here for the season, of other people coming to haul out, and the parking lot started filling up, so it became very busy with boats here. Surprisingly, not many people. I think everyone just wanted to get their boat here, get it secure, and then leave it as they evacuated. But the marina did start to fill up very fast, and I think they got over a thousand calls within about three days of people wanting to put their boat here, so they did have to turn people away. But there was a good number of people that got in here and were able to secure their boats for the storm. As we continued to track the hurricane through the days and as it was starting to uh, wipe out, you know, St. Martin and the Virgin Islands, which was just terrible for us to watch because we've spent some really good times there and love the places and it was just horrible to see what was happening to all of the islanders, to friends that lived there that had boats there, everything was just taken from them. So we were dealing with that and the stress of it possibly happening to us too. They were expecting it to come up to Florida at that point as a category four or five hurricane and possibly running right up the center of the state where we were. So it went from something where we didn't even expect it to be a big deal to something we needed to really, really worry about. And the unfortunate thing is because we've put so much time into this boat, we didn't want to leave it, even if it could have been the safer thing for us to do is just hightail it out of town. There's a local shelter here at the elementary school that some people went to last year for Hurricane Matthew, and it's a big brick building, uh, concrete, so we felt safe there. And that was the plan when things started to look really bad, was to go there for the storm. The only bad thing is is they don't allow pets, and we just couldn't see ourselves leaving Georgie on board. It would just be horrible for, you know, a pet that relies on you and trusts you, and if you don't feel safe somewhere, leaving your pet there. So we were really thankful and very, very lucky that there are a couple of women in the boatyard we were friends with, Gail and Julia, and they were actually headed up to Alabama to get out of the way of the storm. And they said they would be more than happy to take Georgie with them. So um, about three days before the hurricane hit, we <laughs> brought her over to their boat. And as they were loading up their U-Haul and everything, uh, we said our goodbyes to her, which was hard. But it was really nice knowing that no matter what happened from that point, it was only ourselves we had to worry about and the boat. And at least we didn't have this pet that was going to, you know, dictate where we ended up. Georgie girl, oh, you're gonna go on a road trip. Are you excited? You get to get out of Florida and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Poor kitty. We're leaving you so we can protect you. After saying our goodbyes to Georgie, we also had a few other friends that were getting ready to leave Indian Town as well. Having an early hurricane party, we headed up to the local Guatemalan restaurant to enjoy some tacos and beers and talk about what everyone's plans were for the storm. <laughs> you can have a sip if you want. Everybody's boozing it up. Pre-hurricane party. 
Let's get some good Guatemalan food in us. Yeah. Like Famosa, our favorite beer from Guatemala. Uh -oh. Advertising for someone Oh, else. that's right. Yeah, can't advertise anymore. No, I know. We advertise beers too much. This week they have... So this is our hurricane prep. Um, kind of what we've done to, to prepare is strip the boat completely down from everything. Sails, the booms off, the head sails are off. Uh, we took the wind generator off, the solar panel is coming off, we haven't pulled it off yet. Door vents. But the big things are, is we know when you have that kind of rain coming through, um, any little hole, any little gap in anything, and it's gonna find its way in. So we did use heat shrink. Um, this is what they use for when they're heat shrinking boats. They use this tape that transitions between the heat shrink and the hull itself. So it should pull off easy, otherwise Jess will be spending six months painting again. Um, just to go all the way around all of our hatches. It doesn't have to be a perfect job because the seals are taking care of the majority of that, but it does help prevent any wind from blowing in through the seals. We did also finally replace the seals in the hatch too. Um, which we've been procrastinating on. We hadn't had any leaks previously, but at least this was a good time to do it. Up front, ignore the power cords running for our air conditioner. Those are gonna come out tomorrow. Those are coming out tomorrow, last minute thing. What we did is, if you look the cleat over on the side, we have chain. The, the main one has chain running around it, running through the uh, the spring that you see there, which is a stainless steel spring, just to kind of absorb some of the shocks. With a thimble, um, we weren't splicing it in, we don't want to splice it in, so we just knotted it and zip tied it on, so just to help prevent chafe at that point, which leads across the bow and back to the cleat. Now, for the, the main pieces, we did run them both to the same cleat, which are welded in. They're welded into a bulkhead, extremely strong, but in case one of those fails, we wanted this one to fail and still have this. So instead of normally you would run them one to each side, um, the problem is, is if one of those fails, it's taking out both for that side, and then the boat's swinging all over the place. So over on this side, this is 3 8 Dyneema. Um, that we had lying around of 200 foot sections of Dyneema. So spliced up quick little straps. They're going around the cleats back here. These will support about 20,000 pounds, like 19,600 pounds a, a piece. Uh, so extremely, extremely strong stuff, very durable items. And those are actually ran through um, to each one of those positions. Those are the fallback. If these stretch out too much or they fail from chafe or anything, we do have that additional uh, protection. So that's that's the main things up front. We do have another one that's ran, which we haven't tightened yet because we still have to move a few things. In the back, we did the same basic things um, to the two posts. And then we went around the work yard and borrowed fenders. So we have fenders all the way around. Um, we're not too worried about damage to us. Biggest thing is we got a new power boat next to us and we don't want to damage them. Uh, in case they, because they only put down two fenders and some really, really weak dock lines. So if anything happens, they're probably going to break loose and hit into us. And we're trying to fend them off. So we put down a bunch of boards there. But uh, yeah, that's we're, basically we're it. That's what we did. So as you look around now, you'll see that some things aren't put away, um, but they will be before the storm. I'm not zooming down that far. <laughs> they can't see the cockpit. <laughs> we'll just go over a few things um, that we've done so far. Done. <laughs> Getting a the grill's little... gone. The grill is gone. The flag will come down. Solar panel is going to be the next thing done tonight. Wind gen's off. Wind generator's off. Radar. Radar is staying because it's too many wires. Um, we have taped down our companion way. This is heat shrink tape. Nice wide stuff. So if any winds come, any waters they're not gonna find their way in, hopefully, so we won't get water damage on the inside if the boat does stay intact, which we hope it does. Don't destroy the inside as well. Before we leave tomorrow, we're going to tape up the hatch and we're going to lock it shut. So hopefully everything will stay closed and dry. We've taped on our, um, or taped down the chart plotter here. So hopefully that's gonna be safe. One of the things that we've tried to do to protect all of our lines for chafing because even though we've put out multiple lines, we don't want them to fail 
Uh, we've taken a pair of mantle jeans and cut them up and wrap them around the lines with cable ties to secure those. So hopefully if there's, you know, a bunch of back and forth here. You can't show my lines at all. But this isn't done yet. Okay, good. Don't worry. They're not looped pretty yet. Yeah, we haven't made final adjustments yet to all the lines. Uh, so this is where we stand right now. Tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, the shelter's open. We're going to go claim a spot. Hopefully they will let us kind of go in and out after we register. The Tropical storm force winds are supposed to start coming tomorrow night with the full force of it on Sunday afternoon So we expect to spend um, 36 hours or so pretty much locked in the shelter until they give us the all clear to go But we really just wanted to be close to the boat to get back to it to assess damage to do anything We can to save her if she needs it if there's still time um, And then after that even if there's no power here in town, we've got water tanks full We've got propane tanks full, we've got canned food up the wazoo. Uh, so if we have to sit down and hunker, we will. But the good thing too is that we have an inReach right now, which we can use to send out messages to family and friends. So um, follow us on Facebook, we'll be updating that even if we lose internet connection. I have a friend in charge of our Facebook page and she will be posting our messages there. So you will be able to tell what's going on with us throughout this whole storm and uh, hopefully we see you clear and well on the other side.